The Caribbean citizenship by investment programs have long been a subject of international scrutiny. Now, St. Lucia is taking steps to bolster its program's integrity. After careful review and extensive discussions with stakeholders and other OECS heads of government with CIP programs, the government of St. Lucia announces that it has decided to sign the Memorandum of Agreement, MOA, already signed by other OECS CIP countries. The memorandum calls for common standards and procedures in the following areas. Pricing, information sharing and transparency standards, regulation, security screening and framework, regulation of agents, marketing and promotion of programs, joint training and capacity building, dispute resolution, amendment and termination. Prime Minister Pierre is proposing additional measures. In addition to signing this memorandum, St. Lucia has made further suggestions to strengthen this regional agreement, including proposing legislative changes to address change of name requests. This has been agreed to by other heads of government. After consultations are completed with regional governments and other partners, the government of St. Lucia will suggest further strengthening of the CIP program. This would include an annual quota, a net worth for applicants, escrow accounts to be held in St. Lucia or in individual islands, a requirement that only licensed promoters will be allowed to submit applicants to local authorized agents, and those promoters will have to submit a due diligence report on each applicant. Over the past year, St. Lucia has implemented changes in response to U.S. concerns, including banning applicants from Russia and Belarus. Over the last year, the Citizenship by Investment Unit in St. Lucia has instituted all six principles agreed to with the United States government. From February 15, 2023, a ban on applicants from Russia and Belarusians. From September 4th, 2023, implemented applicant interviews. From September 4th, 2023, vetting of all applicants through the local financial intelligence authority. From January 2020, sharing of denials with the Joint Regional Communication Center, JRCC. An operational review of the program by international consultancy firm will commence shortly. The St. Lucia CIP unit will seek international support with the recovery of revoked passports. Additionally, the St. Lucia CIP unit publishes an annual report that is tabled in Parliament, which includes financial statements. Furthermore, the free structure for different options are published in the official gazette. The Governor of St. Lucia remains committed to maintaining and reinforcing the integrity of its CIP program with a transparent and accountable process that delivers tangible benefits to all St. Lucians. The Prime Minister provided further clarity on the origins of the change, which he says is a reversion to what obtained years ago. I want to remind you that what St. Lucia is proposing is what St. Lucia had before. That was reversed by the last government. The, the, the three things being an annual quota, a net worth for applicants, and escrow accounts to be held in St. Lucia. St. Lucia already had established that, and it was reversed, reversed by the last government. So we are saying that we are we are saying that we should bring, we are advising our other governments to bring it back. So basically go back where we started. Because that, that is where we started. We said it would be 500 applicants, the fee would have been $200,000, and then each applicant should have had a net worth. So we say, let's go back there. Be With this development, St. Lucia hopes to strike a balance between international standards and local benefits. Gina Filippi, HDS News Force.